Dear friends in Christ, once more I welcome you all to the celebration of this holy sacrifice of the Mass. And definitely following our Catholic tradition, we continue, even when someone departs, we continue praying for that person, that the Almighty God may forgive him of all that could have gone wrong and grant him eternal rest. And that is the main intention of this holy sacrifice of the Mass, as we commemorate four months since the passing of the late Archbishop. We pray for him and commend him into the hands of the Almighty God that the Lord may grant him eternal rest. We have heard the word of the Lord today, especially the Gospel. It is talking about, it is a narrative about this situation that mirrors the situation of every human being, all of every believer, the situation of the storm at the sea. We are very well conversant with the whole story, but I want us to reflect on only three points from this story. The first point was the aspect of obedience. The aspect of obedience. We have heard that Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. That is how this whole, this whole story begins. Jesus makes his disciples, he commands them to get into the boat and go to the other side before him. And the disciples are obedient. And the disciples listen to the command. Not only that, but even when the situation toughens, even when there are waves on the sea, even when there is a storm on the sea, and their master is not with them, they do not say, that, ah, let us go back. Let us abandon this whole endeavor. They do not. They continue the journey because the Lord had commanded them to go to the other side, despite the fact that the winds were against them. Dear friends in Christ, we can also look at ourselves. We can look at the vocations that the Lord has given us, the vocation of marriage, the vocation of the priesthood, the vocation of religious life. On that day you made the vows. That is when the Lord commanded you to go on that journey, the journey called marriage, the journey called religious life, the journey called the priesthood. That even when you are on the lake and you assume that you are abandoned, you don't have to turn back. You don't have to say, ah, no, let me abandon this whole endeavor and go back to the shore. No. Even when there are difficulties, even when there are storms, you have to continue obeying because the Lord sent you on this journey. You have to have that consistency, that internal coherence to continue on the endeavor that God has sent you to do. Dear friends in Christ, the second aspect is the presence of God. The disciples were in the boat, and the Lord was in the mountains, in the hills, praying. The question is, were the disciples abandoned? Had they been abandoned, their boat would have capsized. It would have collapsed completely. They were not abandoned. Despite the fact that the Lord was not physically present there, he was spiritually present. He was in prayer and is omnipresent, is omniscient. He, was, he, he knew whatever was taking place on the sea. He knew. But what has the gospel told us? The gospel has told us that he remained in the hills for the first watch, the second watch, the third watch of the night, and in the fourth watch around 4 a.m., that is when he appeared. After sending them on the sea at 6 p.m., he only appeared at 4 a.m. You can question yourself that is the Lord absent in these things that are happening in my life? He is not absent, but he manifests himself powerfully, his presence at his own time, not at our own times. So we should have the confidence the consistency that even when there are difficulties in our lives, we don't abandon the faith, we don't abandon our faith in God, but we continue on the journey 
trusting that in his own time, the Lord will manifest his presence and he will be able to overcome our difficulties. And lastly, dear friends in Christ, the aspect of being humble, being meek. Saint Peter made a challenge to the Lord. He told him that if it is you, command me to come and I also walk on water and come to you. And the Lord said, come. And Saint Peter was able to walk on water. But unfortunately, halfway through the journey, he removed his focus on the Lord and he put his focus on himself. Sometimes we put our focus on ourselves, our own weaknesses, our own insufficiencies. Oh, I can't walk on water. Oh, I cannot accomplish this. It is not about you, it is about the Lord. You should be looking at the Lord's power, not at the difficulties and challenges that you go through in life. And definitely the Lord is always ready to intervene, especially on behalf of the meek, the humble that we've had in the first reading. That is why he intervened on behalf of Moses. We've heard that he was very meek, he was very humble. Te yomba yomba nabantu, nakuna nakwele ganabantu, te wele ganabantu, nedda. Yo no vitero omukama, omukama naruane entalozo, ate no sovola okuvera omuanguzi muvyona. Let us pray that the Almighty God may grant us the courage to remain consistent on the journey of life on which he has set us, and that he may grant us the courage to remain faithful even amidst the difficulties that we experience in our faith and in our lives. The Lord be with you. With your spirit.